Welcome to day eight of our Lent Reflections for this year, again taken from this book called 40 Women by Roz Clark. Today in day eight we look at Tamar and our reading is taken from Genesis chapter 38. It happened at that time that Judah went down from his brothers and settled near a certain Adolamite whose name was Hira. There Judah saw the daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. He married her and went into her. She conceived and bore a son, and he named him Ur. Again she conceived and bore a son, whom she named Onan. Yet again she bore a son, and she named him Shelah. She was in Chezib when she bore him. Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn. Her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord put him to death. Then Judah said to Onan, Go into your brother's wife and perform the duty of a brother-in-law to her. Raise up offspring for your brother. But since Onan knew that the offspring would not be his, he spilled his semen on the ground whenever he went in to his brother's wife, so that he would not give offspring to his brother. What he did was displeasing in the sight of the Lord, and he put him to death also. Then Judah said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, Remain a widow in your father's house until my son Shelah grows up, for he feared that he too would die like his brothers. So Tamar went to live in her father's house. In course of time, the wife of Judah, Shua's daughter, died. When Judah's time of mourning was over, he went up to Timnah to his sheep shearers, he and his friend Hira the Adullamite. When Tamar was told, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep, she put off her widow's garments, put on a veil, wrapped herself up and sat down at the entrance to an aim, which is on the road to Timnah. She saw that Shelah was grown up, yet she had not been given to him in marriage. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be a prostitute, for she had covered her face. He went over to her at the roadside and said, Come, let me come in to you, for he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. She said, What will you give me, that you may come in to me? He answered, I will send you a kid from the flock. And she said, only if you give me a pledge until you send it. He said, What pledge shall I give you? She replied, Your signet and your cord and the staff that is in your hand. So he gave them to her and went into her, and she conceived by him. Then she got up and went away, and taking off her veil, she put on the garments of her widowhood. When Judah sent the kid by his friend the Adullamite, to recover the pledge from the woman, he could not find her. He asked the townspeople, Where is the temple prostitute who was at a name by the wayside? But they said, No prostitute has been here. So he returned to Judah and said, I have not found her. Moreover, the townspeople said, No prostitute has been here. Judah replied, Let her keep the things as her own, otherwise we will be laughed at. You see, I sent this kid and you could not find her. About three months later, Judah was told, your daughter-in-law Tamar has played the whore. Moreover, she is pregnant as a result of whoredom. And Judah said, bring her out and let her be burned. As she was being brought out, she sent word to her father-in-law. It was the owner of these who made me pregnant. And she said, take note, please, whose these are, the signet and the cord and the staff. Then Judah acknowledged them and said, She is more in the right than I, since I did not give her to my son Shalal. And he did not lie with her again. When the time of her delivery came, there were twins in her womb. While she was in labour, one put out a hand, and the midwife took and bound on his hand a crimson thread, saying, This one came out first. But just then he drew back his hand, and out came his brother, and she said, What a breach you have made for yourself. Therefore he was named Perez. 
after his brother came out with the crimson thread on his hand, and he was named Zera. Rape, infertility, rivalry, more rape, and we're still in Genesis. It's not exactly family-friendly reading, is it? And yet, of course, family is the whole point. These women we've been reading about are all fighting for the family, fighting to keep the family going through the generations, fighting for their own place and their son's inheritance within it, fighting for the protection and honour of the people in it. And so today we have another story that isn't exactly family friendly, another woman fighting for her right to be counted as part of the family, another family full of tragedy and trauma. It starts so straightforwardly. Judah marries and his wife has three sons, Er, Onan and Selah, three fine sons, Er's to carry his name through the generations, three fine, wicked, selfish sons. Judah finds a suitable wife to marry his eldest, Er. Before Tamar can fall pregnant by him, God puts wicked Er to death. No problem. There are two more sons to go. Tamar is married again, this time to the second one, Onan. Selfish Onan, who doesn't want his first son to be counted as belonging to his elder brother. Selfish Onan who will go and lie with his wife, but make sure never to get her pregnant. Selfish, wicked Onan, who goes the same way as Ur, he has put to death by the Lord. No problem, there is still one more son after all. But Judah doesn't want his third son to go the way of his first two. He decides it's Tamar who has to go. She must be the one who is dangerous, poisonous, and has brought only harm to his two fine sons. He knows that he ought to marry her to Salah, his third son. He ought to keep her in his household, his family, but he won't. Judah sends Tamar away. He sends her back to her own father. He cuts her out of his family. Oh, sure. He promises he'll send for her to return. He promises she'll marry Salah one day. But that day never comes. For she saw that, though Salah had grown up, she had not been given to him as his wife. Tamar knows her rights. Tamar knows her place. Tamar is going to fight for a place in the family, whatever it takes. Tamar is bold. She is brave. She isn't afraid to act shamelessly in order to shame her father-in-law. She may be the one disguising herself as a shrine prostitute, but he is the one actually paying for sex with a shrine prostitute. She may be the one pregnant and unmarried, but he is the one who has broken his promises to his family. And amazingly, in the end, Tamar isn't shamed for her actions. She isn't blamed for her actions. Even Judah admit, himself admits, she is more righteous than I, since I wouldn't give her my son, Salah. Righteous indeed. She is Tamar, the mother of Perez and Zerah. Tamar, whose descendant David, some nine generations later, will be the first to sit on the throne in Jerusalem. Tamar, who will be the first of just three women to be named in the genealogy of Christ. Tamar, who would not let any man take away her right to be counted in the family of God's people. And so our reflection questions. How far would you go to make sure that you are counted among the family of God's people. What has that cost already? And has it been worth it? 
Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for Tamar's faith, which would not let her give up her place among your people, no matter what it cost her. May our faith be as bold and brave as Tamar's. May we hold on to our right to be called children of God, no matter what it costs us, for we know the heavenly reward that is to come through Tamar's son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.